Welcome to the background music tutorial. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I hope you came ready to learn something new because we're going to jump right into it. Alright, let's start this tutorial by creating an empty game object in your scene. I'm just using a game that I've been working on and we can just put this on it and it'll make sense that way. So let us rename this to our background music and I already have one so I'm just going to add a one on the end. So then we are going to create our script for this. Let's do a new script and name it our BG Music Selector. You can name it whatever you want, really doesn't matter, except that you shouldn't be capitalized. And let's create that. Okay, open up your script. If it wants to open. Sometimes Unity is a fickle thing. Okay, let's go ahead and drag that over and we should be good. Okay, let us make our parameters. We are going to need three audio sources. You can just make them public, it's easier that way. Audio source. And we'll name the first one track one. And then actually we can save some time and copy paste. Change that to track two. And change that to track three. Now we're just gonna need two simple integers. Sorry, that's an error. The first integer will be our track selector. And the second integer will be our track history. Okay. Now we are going to start the actual code. So first we need our track selector to be equal to something. So we are going to set it equal to a random dot range and we are going to have that go from 0 to 2 so we want to put 0 and 3 in here and that'll give us either a 0 a 1 or a 2 and that is because we have three tracks so we want three numbers now let's move on to our first if statement if our track selector is equal to 0 then all we want to do is play our track one. So track one dot play and make it perfect. Okay, and then we need an else if and I think you can tell what's going to happen here. So let's just go ahead and copy all the way down and go ahead and slap that here. Then we want if our track selector is equal to one, we want track two to play. And our last one, if our track selector is equal to two, we want track three to play. All right, so what this is doing is it's going to give us a random either zero, one, or two. If it's equal to zero, our first track will play. If it's equal to one, our second track will play. And if it's equal to two, our third track will play. Now, we need to have what happens after that initial track plays. So we are going to make a quick if statement. If track one is playing is equal to false. And we can go ahead and copy again. Copy pasting will save you a lot of time in your coding life. Um, track two is playing is equal to false. And oh, forgot our and statement and track three is playing equal to false. Then, so if no music is playing, we need to select our new music. We're gonna do this by copying our initial start. All right, so this right here would technically work, but the problem that we have right now is that if we're unlucky and our tracks choose and our random generator choose the same number twice so if we get two zeros in a row it's going to play the same track back to back and usually we don't want that if we're trying to have a random background music generator and you could do this where it's ordered to play one then two then three but i kind of like this random element as long as it's not repeating so this is where our track history comes in so we need to put our tracks with a history number. So if track one is played, 
then we're going to set track history to 1. And we can go ahead and copy again. If 2 is played, we'll set history to 2. And if 3 is played, we'll set history to 3. All right. Now, same thing down here. 1, 2, oops, and 3. And now we actually have to use our selected things. So we're going to put an and track history is not equal to track one. All right, now go ahead and copy and paste and paste and then change our numbers, track three and track two. So make sure we didn't make any mistakes. I think we're good though. All right, let's try it out, I guess. Let's go ahead and save my main files on the other screen, but go ahead and save everything. Now we want to add our audio sources, which is going to be three separate. Actually, it's easier just to type source instead of audio. One, two, I think it was there automatically for me. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's make sure they are not playing on awake since that kind of ruins everything we're trying. Now, this is going to sound a little crappy, but... Oh, sorry, wrong folder. Let's go to our sounds folder. These audio sources take any sound source, so you can literally put anything in them. I'm going to put things that play really quick. So I'm going to put three different reloading noises, and that way we can test if everything's working. So let's go ahead and drag each of these sources into here. And let's keep an eye on these two numbers to see if everything's working, right? Okay, so it chose track one, chose track three, chose track one again, chose track three again, and there's two. And it's not repeating any of the same ones, it's going different each time, and it looks like everything is working perfectly. So let's add our actual music in. Let's go with our scary music for this game, since it is a little bit horror themed. Go ahead and slap that there, and that there. Now let's go ahead and play our game. And we have some creepy music happening. Let's see if we can manually force a change. If you go to one and two. No, it has to wait till the next thing. But you get the point, if I let this track play for three minutes and it switches to the next one, it will go to the next track and not repeat itself. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was a quick and dirty one, something that is perfect for a beginner level, and I hope you use it in your game and it works well for you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.